Hey there everyone, Mr. Lewis here, ready to begin Unit 3, Folk and Pop Culture with you today. So culture is a really interesting unit, um, and we're really going to be looking at culture over the next few units, but specifically with Unit 3, we're looking at, as I mentioned, folk and pop culture, popular culture. What we're getting into after that are things like ethnicity, religion, language, and these are all parts of culture, but specifically with this unit, we're going to introduce the idea of culture and give you a broad overview. So we look at a lot of really interesting stuff in Unit 3. I'm excited to get started with it. Let's do this. Okay, so Unit 3, Folk and Popular Culture. Let's talk about it. First of all, a few big ideas that we want to keep in mind as we move through this unit. One, how does where people live and what resources they have access to impact their cultural practices? So as we talk about specifically uh, folk culture, what we're going to learn is that the surrounding environment and the resources that it provides or doesn't provide uh, says a lot about the culture and steers the culture typically in one way or another. So we can think about clothing, right? Uh, we can think about day-to-day -day activities and how in some folk cultures that are more isolated, uh, sometimes more primitive or, or whatever it might be, their clothing tends to take on the, the form of uh, what best suits them for that particular environment. So our surrounding environment, our resources, uh, impact the way we live in a lot of ways. Just think about recreation, right? People who grow up in snowy, mountainous areas uh, are going to get into snowboarding and skiing and things of that nature, whereas people who live in warm coastal areas uh, are going to be hanging out on the beach and might get into surfing or, or swimming instead. So uh, it really impacts our day-to-day -day lives, not just what we wear, but also just what we do for fun or, or uh, down to the very basic needs of how we survive. Big idea number two is how does the interaction of people contribute to the spread of cultural practices? So there's this big thing that we've discussed before that's going to be an even bigger topic in Unit 3 and, and have even more significance, and that's diffusion. When we talk about the interaction of people and the spread of cultural practices, that is Diffusion 101. So we're, we're going to talk a lot about that, and it takes on different roles, but that's how culture spreads. That's how uh, customs spread, right, is through diffusion. Finally, how and why do cultural ideas, practices, and innovations change or disappear over time? So some customs or cultural behaviors or practices change, some don't, right? The things that tend to change a little quicker are pop culture. Music gets replaced very quickly. Movies get replaced. Some stick around for a long time and become fan favorites, but pop culture tends to change very quickly. It's about what's in vogue, or, or in other words, what's hip or popular at that time. Whereas folk culture tends to stick around a little bit longer. It's usually based on, these, the, their practices in folk cultures are usually based on religion, heritage, uh, ethnicity, things that are very, very personal and important and tend to stick around through tradition. So, introduction to culture. Let's talk about culture a little bit. 3.1. Culture, as it's defined here, is the material traits, customary beliefs, and social forms that make the distinct identity of a group of people. So, think about those three things. Material traits, okay, stuff that we can see, material goods things that we can see and hold, beliefs, and then finally social forms. So what kind of social roles do people take on, um, whether it's uh, uh, looking at uh, male-female roles or, or kids versus elderly or whatever it might be. So in this unit, we're going to focus more on the material side of things. We're going to get into some of those belief systems and religion and things like that later on. In this unit, we're focusing on material culture, the visible elements that a group possesses and leaves behind for the future. These are things like architecture, for example, clothing, uh, art, a lot of things that we can actually visibly study and then use to analyze that uh, particular culture's history in some cases. So in our modern world, things change fast, right? Culture changes so quickly. These, these ideas and certain fashion trends and, and dances and all the things that pass through social media in our world today, diffusion happens so rapid fire that 
popular culture changes very quickly and 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 really we live in a, a a culture that's dominated by popular culture so if popular culture is changing so is our overall culture and some people you know go with that and move with it and make the most of it usually young people but also old whereas uh, a lot of people you know have grown up with a certain culture and tend to be defensive of that culture because it's what they've gotten used to and change might scare them a little bit and that's why we end up with some generational differences uh, some big generational gaps is because of how quickly culture can change specifically in our country but a lot of places as it says at the bottom here many people uh, maintain features of traditional cultures right there are people who um, say go to Sunday mass uh, here in the United States and, and have been going since they were a little kid and they're doing things that um, hundreds of years ago people going to say a Catholic mass and in, in, in that in that example uh, uh, um, uh, Catholic Church uh, are doing some of the same things that people in Catholic churches were doing uh, hundreds of years ago and the same thing would, would go for uh, some mosques right doing the same practices that that Muslims were doing hundreds of years ago so there are some very traditional cultural features that do stick around they tend to be tied to religion but are also tied to just heritage and, and ethnicity. So pop culture diffuses very quickly, right? One example of that is soccer. Soccer is the most popular sport in the world. A big reason for that is the UK, uh, England specifically, is where soccer is known to have originated. And the British Empire spread throughout the world. The British Empire accounted for uh, one-fifth of all the world's landmass at one point. Well, you better believe they brought their soccer with them, right? So as they did that, it became popular elsewhere. And there's a few other reasons soccer might be popular. It's it's uh, easy to get a game going, right? All you need is a ball and a couple goals, which goals can, as you see in the back here, take on very many uh, uh, different forms. And so it's an easy thing to get going. Um, you don't need a lot of uh, resources to play it. You don't even need a, a perfect soccer ball. You just need something to kick around in some cases. Whereas Something like ice hockey, right, which is a great sport and we love it here in the United States, it tends to be more popular in colder areas where the ponds freeze over in the winter and little kids get out on the ice and it's what they grow up playing. It's also an expensive thing to play. You need a lot of equipment, you need a lot of resources, and in warm areas you can certainly have an ice rink, but uh, it's not that common and they're not all that cheap, right? So it gives you an idea of why some things might diffuse faster or slower than others. So material culture, let's talk a little bit about that. As we're focusing on material culture, we're also differentiating constantly between folk culture, excuse me, and popular culture. So two of the things we want to look at within material culture are daily necessities and leisure activities. Daily necessities are things like food, clothing, shelter, whereas leisure activities, we're talking about art, music, entertainment. So all of this stuff is important. And as we look at pop versus folk culture, one example that we can provide right off the bat is clothing. Clothing in the United States versus clothing for Inuit Eskimos, so Inuit natives that we commonly refer to culturally as, as Eskimos, um, but Inuit is the specific uh, uh, term there. Inuit natives don't wear clothes that are necessarily like just in vogue, right, or in fashion. They're wearing clothing that's very much influenced by their environment and the resources that they have available. Whereas the United States is defined by occupation income, taste. We wear things that we want to wear. Even if you make a billion dollars, you can walk around in jeans and a hoodie, right? If that's your taste. And yeah, our occupation sometimes determines what we wear on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So if I came to school uh, just wearing like some cut-off sweatshorts and, and uh, a tank top and a hat and sunglasses, that wouldn't be acceptable because my occupation demands a certain apparel a certain level of, of uh, uh, professionalism. So your occupation often determines that, whereas when you're living in a folk culture, specifically one like Inuit natives where it's very cold, you have to think about what's gonna keep me warm? What can I use to keep me warm all day regardless of what I'm doing all day, right? So that's an example of pop culture versus folk culture. Another example, 
Visco girls versus Inuit girls. One example on the left here, Visco girls, you're wearing what's uh, trendy. You're, you're wearing the, the latest fashion uh, trend and, and, and what's uh, you know cool or deemed hip or, or whatever it might be. Whereas Inuit girls are wearing uh, what they can make with the resources they have, uh, what's going to keep them warm in those conditions. Very different lifestyles. One is pop culture with Visco girls and one is folk culture with Inuit girls. So last couple things here, cultural traits. As we look around our world and we see different aspects of culture, things like buildings, right? Architecture, the way stuff is built, the way we use our land, whether it's for businesses or farming or residential uh, uh, housing or whatever it might be, and food preferences or taboos on fruit, food preferences. These are all examples of cultural traits. They're, they're things that give us some insight into what that culture actually looks like and what they value, right? How they make use of their resources. So one example of this, as you look at um, wine production around the world, there's a lot of places that produce wine. There's a lot of places that don't produce much at all. And as you look at the, this Choropleth map, the countries in dark purple produce a lot of wine. The countries in this very light pink color, like you see in most of Africa, do not produce a lot of wine, even though some of those areas could, right? Well, as we look at specifically, okay, the Middle East here, the Arabian Peninsula, uh, Southwest Asia as we get into uh, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, down here in Southeast Asia into Indonesia, there's a, a lot of similarities in these countries, one of them being religion. One of the reasons that you don't see a lot of wine production in these areas, and some of Africa as well, where Islam is very predominant, is because that religion doesn't look too kindly on alcohol consumption or production. And so that is the law in some of these cases. It is religious law. And if you are uh, caught selling or, or consuming any type of wine or alcohol, you, you could uh, have ramifications. So, so um, that's why, in some cases, culture determines our economy, right? Culture determines our, our activities, economically speaking or bus business-wise, because something might be taboo or unaccepted, in other words, in that society, in that culture. So two, uh, two more slides here. Folk culture versus pop culture. A few distinctions as we move forward. Origin, diffusion, distribution. The origins of folk culture tend to be very anonymous, kind of mysterious almost. And, and they go back so far that they have multiple origins, multiple hearts, but are very mysterious and, and very hard to pinpoint. Whereas the origins of, of pop culture are very specific. Right? If uh, somebody posts a video on YouTube or Instagram that goes viral, we can very easily trace it back. And people start doing parodies of it and posting up, but we can still trace it back to that specific point of origin. And it's usually found, pop culture is, in developed countries where people have more time and money and uh, um, therefore opportunity for leisure activities. And, and more popular culture can spread. So let's talk about spreading. Diffusion in folk culture tends to be very slow and typically takes relocation for it to occur, whereas pop culture is very rapid fire diffusion. Think of something going viral on the internet. That is popular culture diffusion. It happens fast because developed countries tend to have very built-in communication systems and, and internet and uh, all of those things that allow us to connect to one another and diffuse to one another. Finally, distribution. Folk culture is very isolated and they tend to be influenced by local factors, specifically environmental factors and the resources that that environment allows. Popular culture, on the other hand, is very widespread and wherever you find technology or a screen, you can find some popular culture. Remember as we move forward that cultural relativism is very important. And what that means is that as we study other cultures, it's very easy to say, well, that's weird or that's different, almost in a negative way. But culture is relative, meaning we're judging things based on our own culture when really it's not right or wrong. They're just norms in different 
parts of the world. You know, we look at some things and say, oh, how terrible, but remember that there are hundreds of millions of Hindus out there that look at the beef consumption in the United States and probably are aghast at that and, and sickened by that. So it's all relative, right? Keep that in mind and don't be judgy. Okay, everyone, that's it for section 3.1. I'm um, looking forward to getting more into culture as we move through the week, but that's it for today. We're going to pause there. Next lecture, we're going to get more into popular culture. So we're going to focus on pop culture first, uh, talk about some interesting stuff with that. It's all around us, so it's easy to study, and then we'll move more into folk culture beyond that point. All right, have a great day, everyone. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in.